So we have to remember that, you know, uh, you are focused on, on the, the um, fine arts, which includes art, music, theater, PE in that section. But in that section, the, the questions only come from two different sources. From this document here, your, the art standards, well, it's actually more than that, considering there's more subjects. So it's from the art standards, the music standards, the theater standards, and the PE standards. Now, all of those that standards documents are in your the Google Drive. And it's important that you print each of those out. And like, even when you're doing 240 tutoring, um, you should, if you find, you know, ideas, concepts, strategies, maybe that they've, they have their write them in your standards document. I want for you to be so fluent and literate in the standards, in knowing what you are supposed to know before you enter the classroom and what you're supposed to be able to do with the students in your art classroom or in your theater classroom or in your music classroom or your what's the other one PE classroom um I just had someone I don't know if it's here it might be let me see hopefully it's here someone turn in just a really great deep dive maybe this is it um no this is not the one well I mean but this one looks is pretty good everything that were areas of need because I'm gonna ask you to go through and not just with a reading like a, a surface reading of it because we can go through and read any article but you don't really know something unless you can explain it to someone unless you can like dissect it synthesize so I want for you to be able to just explain to someone well art standard one is mostly about this and then there's like these specifics in there and art standard two is mostly about this um, you need to have that um, deep understanding in order to be able to speak of it to others. And uh, you, oh yeah, it is. She did do a lot for the music. So here, the different concepts and terms that she didn't understand that she couldn't just conversationally, because that's how you know, if someone can talk about something and they're not spitting lies or gaslighting you and it's actual facts then they they're knowledgeable that's what that's how we know and so um <clears throat> going through these um documents and this is her whole fine art section anywhere there was i wish we could is there a way to like oh thank goodness i'm sorry i was like all reading it like this ridiculous person so anywhere there was an area of need for her to you know she found clarification and wrote it on there drew pictures even um and and so this kinesthetic activity of going through your these are all the standards like she sent in her standards for the fine arts section which includes several different standards documents she put them all in one scanned them and sent them um you can send them individually if you want but i certainly want for you to be you know engaging with the text and engaging with the text and a critical reading means that you are going through it with a fine tooth comb. Why is art the only one that's not in here? Let me see. Physical education. I know music was the one that I think. Okay. I guess she didn't turn that one in, but that's that's fine. She still did a fantastic job. I'll get with her later. But um, going through these and understanding, you know, what each standard, uh, what each skill and what knowledge do we need to have? So let's take a look at art. You've been doing the art, um, you know, preparation already, right? So you should know some of this it should, should seem familiar. So in standard one, the art teacher understands how ideas for creating art are developed, organized from perception of self, self, <laughs> others, and natural and human made environment. So we're going to do a deeper dive of that. It, it's about understanding how um, we organize the building and creating of art. So. Everything on the right hand column of this document, which is like the Bible for your um, 
content area, for your profession. These are the things that by law, the state legislature has decided and TEA has decided, like codified in law, that you must know these things that are on the left-hand side denoted with a K. You have to know these things and you have to be able to do these things, these skills. So you must know how perception is developed. How, how do human beings even develop perception? Through observation, prior knowledge, beliefs, cognitive processes, multisensory experiences help develop a person's perception. Assist students in learning to deepen and expand their ability to perceive and reflect on the environment. We want the students to be able to perceive the world around them, perceive works of art, other, um, you know, perspectives. But in order for that to happen, we need to give them opportunities to observe, to connect prior knowledge, to, um, you know, experience multi-sensory experiences so that we deepen and expand their ability, again, to reflect on the environment and perceive the real world. This is you doing it, you creating those, um, those activities, those lessons that help students deepen and, ex and expand their abilities. Um, how experience, imagination, and perception of natural and human-made environments are used as a sort of artistic creation. The way that we perceive nature and human-made environments, not the way that we perceive human-made environments, but, but human-made environments like architecture. It is beautiful and it is art. It's creation, right? Um, but, but also there's so many ways in which art is art. Um, use term terminology for art elements and principles in exploring artistic perception again. Analyze art elements and principles, and you're going to see them. You're going to see which particular ones, what particular elements, what particular vocabulary should I be using? It's going to be specifically laid out for you in the TEKS. Our standards and the TEKS, which are the students um, sort of objectives like the the knowledge concepts and the skill objectives that students should achieve and gain you know grow in within our class and the teaks are vertically aligned kindergarten first second third fourth fifth sixth um, vertically aligned to build those skills to build more opportunities to deepen and expand and perceive now um, we do different things with different age groups, which is why it's important for us to understand like what works for kindergartners, what are kindergartners actually supposed to be learning, we don't have to like make it up on our own what what might they learn in kinder there's a list of things knowledge concepts and particular skills pertaining to art that the students must gain in your class in kindergarten so you know what's developmentally appropriate for them, um, and you you be able to sort of use that um, while you're taking your exam, being mindful of the questions, you know, Ms. Salceda's kindergarten art class is doing a lesson on perception. So uh, a perception lesson is going to be very different in kindergarten than it is in going to be in like fifth grade or sixth grade. So the answer choices that they give me in the multiple choice section are going to be based on what's appropriate with them developmentally, um, cognitively, um, physically, social, emotionally, skill wise, and then choosing, you know, the best and most appropriate response based on those keywords and phrases that they gave me, the age group, the grade level, the diversity, if there's any diversity, then you need to make sure that you have appropriately supported that diversity through differentiation, providing an alternative pathway to success. I'm going to just bring it up because we're talking about how art, there's so many like, methods and and like you know oh here's some of the vocabulary that they have to learn color texture shape form line space value and and the relationship that that plays amongst art but i'm going to show you like just how art is so cool in that something that is in a movie i could use and have it be applicable to sort of what you would do in the classroom uh, my girls and I went on a movie binge watching thing because my daughters were so sick and they could literally do nothing and they were miserable. And I was just like trying to keep them 
entertained, you know? So we, we did this whole, i um, looking for a picture of Finding Dory um, trail of shells. Let's see, I just want a picture. The parents, where is it? I'm so sad if I can't find the picture. I should have taken a picture while I was walk, watching it, but it just made me think of di differentiation. Parents. Where? Oh, here it is. But it, there's an aerial view and it's much better. Um, the parents lose Dory and where's the aerial view? They lose her or she loses them and uh, they stay where she was last seen and they put different shells. They had taught her to follow shells because she suffers from short term memory loss to follow the shells to find them back to the house. And so they put all these different pathways and they're all leading back to the house where they're waiting for her. She found one of them. And that's what differentiation is. It's not changing the lesson to suit the needs of every individual difference in our class. It's making sure that we provide different trails to the goal, different trails by different means, some people are audiovisual, some people need, you know, to have um, other support, linguistic supports, more visuals than normal analogies. So all of the different trails, why doesn't it just show that? Okay. Um, anyway, it was a very cool scene. And I thought, my goodness, that's differentiation. They like sort of, <laughs> it's a, a loose analogy, but in any event, it reminded me of what teachers do. We leave, you know, different paths towards success by bringing different um, supports in for our students. So if they took the time to say, um, you know, Miss Alceda has a, a class with English language learners, or, um, you know, special ed students, 504, socioeconomic disadvantage, like then you provide appropriate supports for them. So we were looking at this and now I'm gonna go and I'm gonna bring up the teeks so that you can see about the standards. So every um, content area, has their own standards. Some of them, have, some content areas have multiple standards like EC through six. Um, I feel like EC through six, special ed um, should should for sure get $150,000 starting salary. You guys have to know a lot about a lot and you have to be able to do a lot and in the real world with very little. But for the purposes of your exam, you are, it's Utopia ISD. You know, you have all the funding, all the supports. In theory, these things should always take place. You will have all of the, um, you know, resources that are necessary for the students to achieve the goals they have outlined in this. And let me go back a little bit. I, this is our teaks, right? And I went to the fine arts section and I'm going to go to the, uh, to the elementary. And here you find all of them. Uh, except for PE. PE is in a separate one. So you'll have to go look in the PE section for just the elementary and then a small portion of sixth grade. But you have the other um, fine arts here. If you'll take a look, this is another legal document. This comes from the Office of the Secretary of State. This is a governmental website. Um, this is the law that was adopted in 2013, the students must learn these things before they leave your classroom. And each of them has like an overarching goal for why the state even has this content area. Why is it a thing? What is the need and what is our goal that we have when, for students in each of these areas, each of these subjects and how it contributes to Texas, you know, as a society, um, you know, as a a function of keeping our society healthy and our students. Um, I mean, that's one of the goals for PE, um, which you'll read when you look through the standards and for and look through, you know, the teaks. One of the goals is a healthier Texas, you know, getting people to have to gain lifelong skills, learn ways to be literate in, in health and in exercise, uh, not to be all crazy about it, but do things that are active and maintain a healthy Texas, that's one of the goals. So let's take a look at fine arts about art. And 
it's pretty broad, the definition, including all of them, but because we know that fine arts help deepen the student's mastery and understanding of other, you know, I'm going to find that picture and show, show it and like in another, at a later date, but it's an example of how fine arts helps illustrate an idea that might be complex, helps people think outside the box. It just is the immeasurable as far as like how it aids to academic achievement. And it's why, um, you know, it's still a part, thankfully, a part of our curriculum and, and a necessity. I wish there were more funding for it. There needs to be more funding, but that's another topic of discussion. So fine arts incorporate the study of dance, music, theater, and visual arts to offer unique experiences and empower students to explore realities, relationships, and ideas. The disciplines, these disciplines engage and motivate all students to learn through active learning, critical thinking, and innovative problem solving. The fine arts develop cognitive functioning, develop cognitive functioning, help develop for sure. And we need that because especially in the elementary, like everything should have an art project connected to it. Like every, you know, content specific. And I mean, like ELAR, math should have some sort of visual or artistic something to connect it because it just helps elevate internalization of that knowledge so much. So um, we have the fine arts they're saying it, this is law, and, and it's researched and it's proven over and over again, science-based proven. Develop cognitive function and increases student academic achievement. It increases their higher order thinking. It increases their communication skills. It increases their collaborative skills, um, making the fine arts applicable to college readiness, career opportunities, workplace environment, social skills, and everyday life. It's important for everything. Students develop aesthetic and cultural awareness through exploration, leading to creative expression. Creativity is uh, creativity encouraged through study of the fine arts is essential to nurture and develop the whole child. And that's one, th one thing that's really important about like PE and the fine arts is that we're not just developing your brain, we're developing the whole child. And this gives that like PE gives su such great opportunities for social emotional development because not everyone is going to be amazing at a skill and being on a team and like, you know, learning um, how to behave, how to lose appropriately. And so there are these um, social skills that are sometimes seen as soft, but they're not. They're so very important. In fact, most of the Fortune 500 um, companies, I read an article last year, said that they prefer having students that are stronger in social emotional intelligence than having like straight A's or higher GPAs, like being phenoms in their content area. So like if you're an engineer they're more, they don't care if you got all straight A's and you're, I mean, they care a little bit, but there, if there's lots of people like that, and they're going to go with the person that has a higher social emotional intelligence over that person that's a genius or phenom, if they can't overcome adversity, problem solve, set goals, risk manage healthy in healthy ways, um, you know, risk taking and risk management. Um, so if they can't, uh, if they don't have a a sense of awareness of self, like a true awareness of self and how awareness of others to be able to work in a team, they don't want them in their company. They want someone who's going to be able to function social, emotionally intelligent, who works together and finds the strengths in people and resources to overcome adversity. And it's something that we have to begin to practice in very small stages, you know? And so when there's a argument on the basketball court in PE, that's a wonderful mini lesson in how we treat people on how we, you know, um, rectify things and the rules of the game and, and integrity and, and following the rules. And so teaching them a lot and fostering a sense of self, but it's not just even that basic way. It's like on a basic level, building a human, but then taking them to another level, um, in, in growing their critical thinking and sort of abstractness, their ability to abstract. We know that kindergartners can abstract. Um, it, they're not cognit cognitively developed yet to be able to, you know, really abstract in a real sense. Um, one moment, I'm gonna go get um, something and I'll be right back. I'm gonna pause this. Okay. Do you have any questions so far? Uh, no, not so far. 
And so increasing visual uh, literacy and sensitivity to surroundings, communities, like being mindful, being observant, teaching them to be unobservant. You know, kindergartners should always are should always go on like little observation or uh, scavenger hunts where they walk around outside and, you know, look for something to, you know, I spy with or some, I don't know, like, but have them increase visual literacy by playing and be sensitive to their surroundings. Look for something that they might draw or represent. Um, sensitivity to communities, memories, images, and life experiences, and utilizing those as sources um, ab about planning and creating original artwork, because they have to create, right? We have to give them time to observe, talk, think about, um, sort of, um, you know, pre-think it out, and and produce the, the artwork in the different domains that they have for us and there's so many that they explicitly tell you here through drawing painting printmaking construction artwork sculpting including model forms and so we want to engage them with as many opportunities for them to do and learn about things people and and um products so that they they build their experience the more experience the students have with different things and hands-on experience the better mapped out their brain is for using that later on in different places and building you know that like positive transfer of information that we have sometimes with things um so do 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 um mm. Students communicate their thoughts and ideas with innovation and creativity through art. Students challenge their imaginations, foster critical thinking, collaborate with others, and build reflexive skills. Remember, re reflective skills. And that's another skill that's very important. You need to reflect on how you did in order to be better. And so that's uh, something that art, you know, art instruction demands that we do with our students, that we, um, you know, draw their attention to the rubric or the um, particular, you know, guidelines of whatever art that we're using and that, and being critical of their, of their work, right? Of their design, of their, their pattern. So, <clears throat> let me see. So while exercising meaningful, did I say that? Problem solving skills, the students develop a lifelong ability to make informed uh, judgments. We want them to be able to make that's the overarching goal. So we have this first one, foundations, observation and perception. The next strand, creativity, creative expression. Remember, neither of these are, are like greater than the other and you don't have to teach them in isolation. I mean, you can do several takes a day at once then you're practicing them these multiple times it seems like there's not that many but you'll be doing these things in varied ways in 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 the myriad of ways that you could possibly infuse drawing and painting and printmaking into your curriculum and your your exercises um so you have foundations of uh, foundations which are your observation and perception we know that um, we have to begin at the gathering of information from subjects in the environment using the senses with our kindergarten. Identify the elements of art, including line, shape, color, texture, form, and principles of design, including repetition, pattern, and balance in the environment. So knowing those things in the environment, taking them to walk around and say, okay, guys, we're going to walk around. We're going to look for patterns. There's so many patterns that you can find on an elementary campus. Like somebody's going to have a bulletin board on the outside. It's going to have a pattern. And so, yes, exactly. That is a pattern. Or you could have, if you're amazing art teacher, you could go set up a pattern around different places, you know, on purpose is so that the students can find and create sort of like a scavenger hunt. That's what I meant, like taking them on field trips. And that's what I called it. I taught seventh through 12th grade and I took field trips all the time. Sometimes if I was because in one of my classrooms at PSJ North for felt like it was like six years, my classroom, I didn't have a window in my classroom. And so it was like always in this like cement block you know almost like not like a jail cell but like a jail classroom like a jail classroom and uh so the hallways were not even that super well lit and they were big and so it was dark and sometimes i would say no it's let's go outside it's a beautiful day we're gonna go outside and read or we're gonna go on a scavenger hunt and look for things um and they'd have to find you know a person place or thing and then come back 
in groups, put together their ideas and come up with like a, um, on a, on a plot map, you know, like he, this is the, um, the, the, what is it? I don't know why I'm pulling a blank. The exposition, the rising action, the climate, and come up with like a, based on the person, place, or things that they found and coming up with a story based on their gatherings. And so just getting them out to look at things, creating like a connection between what they see in the real world. You know, um, if you're a math teacher and you're teaching angles, you can go out and say, let's go find some right angles. And you'll find right angles everywhere in the building, in signs, in other, like the basketball um, court. So finding angles everywhere and taking them to, you know, see it in real life and not just think about it on paper. So uh, I need for you to go through your teaks with a fine tooth comb. Um, they have to compile collections of artwork. So they should put their artwork together. They should be able to, even at kindergarten, you know, say, I, you know, I did, you know, well, because I put, I had all the lines, my shading was there, whatever the case may be. For kindergartners, this is not going to be su such an in-depth self-evaluation, right, of their skills. As the student grows in their abilities, as they grow as a human, cognitively, um, emotionally, socially, um, physically, then they will get more in-depth and, and more reflect reflective in their critique. So that's kindergarten. Let's go look at sixth or fifth grade because sixth grade is somewhere else. Still, still the same um, introduction, right? To tell us that what we already know that just fine arts it increases everything. It's like helps in so many different ways. And they learn so many other things other than academia that are like lifelong necessary skills. Um, you know, you have to be a team player to be in the theater. Like you're not going to, if you're this horrible, perfect, obnoxious person and you don't know how to work with other people or you know, there's lots of things that are taught through these uh, fine arts that aren't necessarily taught in math class or in um, which they, they should be. You know, you should teach your students how to work together in cooperative learning groups. But in these other areas, it gives them a more, a different sort of, um, elements to working together outside of the classroom that adds to and builds on their skills in such a profound way. So um, we have same thing for the second um, paragraph, the four strands, right? And there's, they're all going to do all of these things, challenge their imagination, foster critical thinking, collaborate with others, build reflexive skills, reflective skills, and, and making them meaningful problem solvers. But you'll see that um, you're going to, it's a little bit more in depth here under observation and perception. So they're beginning to observe and explore the world around them, learning about the different um, principles of it, develop and communicate ideas from life experiences about self, peers, family, school, community, imagination, and other works of art. This is... Um, foundation one and observation and perception and so that's a little bit different from what we we were doing in kindergarten right kindergarten we're just making observations was the first one we're not like going straight into developing and communicating life experiences now um and so we small kindergartners really only think of like self and family like community is one we have to sort of teach them about the larger community that you also belong into because they're sort of myopic in their in their vision and sort of like very focused and as they get more aware and self-aware they're able to see like them themselves in a the larger picture and how they fit and how everyone sort of fits art does wonderful things for that all right let me pause in a second i am gonna have to um